we've got qualifying. Set the 32 truck field. A week ago, we were in Michigan for the regular season finale. Austin Hill on the outside of this restart, late race restart, and he gets a good one. And that was the difference maker as he jumped out to the lead and finished the job, winning for the second time this season. When the season opened at Daytona, he won. And when the regular season concluded last week at Michigan, he won again. He's one of our eight playoff contenders that will be running for a championship. Brett Moffitt, the defending series champ. Grant Infinger, the regular season champ. They've all been winners this season, except for Matt Crafton. He has yet to grab a victory, and Grant Infinger. They're the two that have gone winless, but they have been sporty and threatened to win. Maybe tonight is their night. But first things first, we're going to qualify along with Michael Waltrip and Phil Parsons. I'm Vince Welch. Single truck qualifying. They'll go out. They'll take the green. They'll take two timed laps. And the fastest of the two will be their qualifying uh, time and uh, set their position for the race tonight. And where you start is important here. The average starting position of the winner each time we've raced here, 4.3. You better get with it here in qualifying coming up. Yeah, and Vince, uh, last week at Michigan, our poll was almost 185 miles an an hour our poll here is going to be around 125 miles an hour so it's a lot slower right way more of a sensation of speed here at bristol than you're going to have at a place like michigan when you run almost 198 miles an hour you come off these corners you fly down the straightaway and then you got a sharp left hand turn on these 24 degree banks or 27 degree banks and then you got to go the other direction amazingly fast racetrack you know what else is fast phil the pace of this race tonight we've got short stages we'll have strategy from the beginning you got to get with it right off the bat you cannot lay back you got to be on the gas from the word go, and I love that. It's going to be fun. Single truck qualifying for Bristol next. Back at Bristol for Gander Outdoors Truck Series qualifying. This is the first truck out. It's the 21 of Sam Mayer. What a great story. Just 16 years old. In fact, just recently turned 16, and he's the K&N points leader. A little double duty this weekend, also running the K&N race. Tonight, double duty tonight. Had a lot of speed in practice in that uh, GMS truck. I think that was a pretty conservative run for him there on yeah. that one, which is a great idea. You don't gonna, you slip coming off turn four to get the white, it's gonna ruin both of your laps. Yeah, how about that second lap though, Mike? Stepped it up there, and that's what we expected. You gotta make sure you got a little heat in those tires. Sam had to qualify on time. He put down a time there that I think is gonna race tonight. Check in with Hermie Sadler. Got Parker Kligerman and Parker, as you well know, not much we do in NASCAR more fun than running a truck at Bristol if your truck is good. So what's the key to a good qualifying lap? Yeah, this is a big race rush. Good here at the end. We got trucks going around here, but uh, you know, this is a home race for everyone in this food country, USA racing team, Henderson Motorsports, Charlie Henderson. Uh, this is just a big one for us. It's Super Bowl. So I love coming here. It's great racing these guys. It's always a lot of fun. Truck. I think we're solidly top 10. We finished fourth here last year. I think we're better on the long run last year, maybe not quite the short run. So hopefully I can get a solid qualifying lap in with some cloud cover and get a good start spot. Yes. Well, you saw Timothy Peters with a big wiggle during his qualifying run. And Vince, this is just what I mentioned with Sam Mayer. You can't afford to get loose coming to the white, and that's exactly what's happened to Timmy. He got sideways, lost all of his momentum. Not only did that ruin the first lap, it put a damper on the second one as well. And the problem is this truck is not a full-time truck. We have a lot of trucks there. We have 36 trucks per 32 spots. The top 27 have to will qualify in on time, and then we go to provisionals. The 92 does not have very many points. That could put Timothy in danger of not making this race. Timothy former winner here at Bristol. Yeah, and that time was well outside the top 27. In oh, and Cody Roball for the dance step as well. Wow. Another example of how important getting traction on action here is at Bristol. Especially during your call time run. You want to just force it, Vince. Get it down as quick as you can. Cody had to step out. I think we've seen that all three drivers in the same place down at the end of three and four. Well, he sure recovered nicely, though, on that second lap run of 15.80. That's uh, over a half second faster than what he ran in the first lap. That that could be borderline there, Michael. Let's check back in downstairs with Alan Cavana. I'm with 
with Ross Chastain, one of the playoff drivers. We're, we're three for three on drivers kind of getting loose. What are you thinking about this lap coming up? Sounds like four for four there. Um, yeah, three and four looks really slick. Sam did a good job to get through there and maximize the staying underneath the tire grip. So, um, yeah, we'll go out here in our car shield Chevy and just press the attack. That's what Al Nice, uh, Miss Al, or Mr. Al, Miss Lou back home in Texas. Wish y'all were here, but his motto and that's what he's instilled in an East Motorsports and we'll press the attack. Attack here at Bristol guys. We have Brett Moffitt standing by looking what can you learn about watching the first couple of trucks go out on this racetrack. This place seems to change a lot during the course of the day. Yeah it really does and it depends when we get these clouds or not so hopefully we'll catch one but uh just trying to watch our teammate Sam Mayer there he did a did a decent lap there. It's hard to see how much the track's falling off since this morning's practice so I'm uh, not really sure what will be good, but we'll see here in a few more trucks. Good luck. Thank you. Brett Moffitt, the number one seed in the playoffs. Would you consider Brett to be the championship favorite? I, I would put him in my top two. I would put him in my top two. Yeah, and the other would be Ross Chess. Yeah, we just yeah. talked to him. So yeah. that's a that's the pair that I think uh, Vegas odds makers would say are the favorites to win this championship. How, how about the FS1 odds makers? We well, we, we're, we, we're the ones that kind of dictate that. <laughs> we, we watch these trucks pretty closely, and those guys have been on it all year long. I was going to say, Brett Moffitt or uh, Ross Chastain is very thankful for this playoff format because if it was just one through eight in points, Chastain wouldn't even have made the playoffs. He, he wouldn't even be uh, running for this championship. He would have never transferred over from the Xfinity Series. How about uh, Brennan Poole to the top of the chart with a 15-31? That's a really good lap here. The fastest lap we saw in practice was a 15-17. I think we get there, though. This track gets a little heat in it. We know that traction compound. You see it right there. The dark part of the lower corner, that's the traction compound. And as it gets heat in it, these trucks run through it, it just gets stickier and stickier. And I think the later you go, the better your chances are. And a little cloud cover right now, too, is not going to hurt anything else. It's the way the engine performs and everything else. This is the 56 of Timmy Hill. Down in the garage area, check this truck out. He's They put together a nice piece of mm. equipment here for Timmy. And he's decent lap there. Looks like he's pretty loose, though. Been uh, splitting the time this season with his brother. The two have been taking turns behind the wheel. That second lap, that truck was sideways off turn two, and he ran a little bit slower. So now Timmy will have to wait and watch and hope because that time is borderline, just like we talked earlier about Roball, how his time would be on the edge, and Timmy was able just to slip in one spot ahead of him. Yeah, I don't think Timothy Peters' time, I don't think there's any way that that will that will hold up for the top 27 and he's right now he's the second most vulnerable uh in owner points gosh i hate that for one of our great competitors and winners winners over the years especially being a former winner here at yeah. bristol so watch jennifer joe cobb he's had a couple of good races back to back a pair inside the top 20. As a driver, I'm going to tell you, it's nerve-wracking sitting down there at Bristol, watching trucks slip and slide up off the fourth corner, knowing you've got to go do the same thing. Drivers are really paying attention down there, Alan. Yeah, Michael, and I'm with Sheldon Creed. Awesome run lately, two second-place uh, finishes in a row for Sheldon Creed, but what do you have for qualifying at Bristol? It's loose out there. Yeah, I don't know. We're going to see here. Um, the k and car is qualified on that general tire rubber, so it seems to be loose here. Everyone has gone so far, but... Um, Just gonna send it and see where it ends up. Always good life advice, guys. <laughs> I love that attitude from Sheldon Creed. I mean, what choice do you have? He's not afraid to send it either. He does a nice job sending it. He is not afraid. There is no question about that. Here's the 68 of Clay Greenfield. Solid first lap for Clay. 1560 for him. Looks like a little wobbly off turn two. There was tracking first. He got down into turn one, looking to make his third start this season just won a big race over at nashville fairground speedway with the rockley roofing sponsorship on that 68 truck if you look close on the quarter panel that's daryl and stevie down there there's a tribute to daryl it's daryl and stevie's 50th 
anniversary today. How about that? Congrats. Wow. That's, that's, that's cool. terrific. I told them to spin it like they did 50 years ago. Sit down and watch an awesome truck race on FS1. That's so romantic for a couple to do. I, I don't remember that uh, 50 years ago that we were doing a truck race, Mike. Well, a race. A race, okay. You know. <laughs> Here's Rafael Lassar and had to gather that one up. Coming off a of turn two. Driving for Kyle Busch Motorsports, a four-truck contingent here today. And Lassard currently sits second after that lap of a 15.49, chasing a 31. This young man has had, oh, big-time wiggle sideways there. I had it, too, right? Just trying to force the issue, get the gas down a little bit sooner. And so far, the track just isn't accepting it. Still good enough for second. Won't stay there, but uh, so far, so good right now. You look at Harrison Burton, Todd Gilliland. It's a KBM party. We'll see if it, it continues. Back here at Bristol. Gander Outdoors Truck Series qualified. Gus Dean rolling out. Coming off a career best finish last week at Michigan inside the top 15, finished 13th. He's now first lap going, getting a little heat with tires. I think like you just get a oh. ooh, big time wiggle there. I was going to say get a conservative lap in on lap number one and then go for it. Hey, it's supposed to be traction compound. <laughs> Why is everybody <laughs> slipping and sliding down here in three and four? You know what, what I love, Vince, is this is a great visual of how hard it is to get a lap down here at Bristol just have to push so hard in those bankings. If the traction compound isn't activated quite as well as it was in practice, you overshoot it, you lose grip, and there's great visuals of how hard these cats are trying to hang onto their trucks during this qualifying session. Well, and there was, uh, the K&N series was out uh, prior to this qualifying session. Would it be the rubber from a different type of tire? Well, it seems like that's what Sheldon Creed was talking about, that he thought maybe the going on the, right after the general tire rubber may make it uh, make, make a difference. So as, as Michael said, it needs to get hot, it needs to activate, so maybe a combination of the two? I think that's quite possible, possible. Yes, yeah. Yes, sir. And also, I don't think anyone's going to try to run just above that compound because it was so much slower in practice earlier when you got up out of there, but heck, if you keep seeing people about spin out, you might have to take a chance. You know who took a chance that worked out for him. <laughs> Columbus, is that Christopher Columbus? Was it I mean, Canada? Was it Canada? I'm in Priestin. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Columbus did too. Hey, last week, is that Christopher Columbus? <laughs> Let's get out of Herbie. Harrison Burton, always good to watch TV and see what your competitors are doing, but what you're seeing, how is that affecting your confidence versus grip level mixture we got going on here? Well, um, yeah, I was pretty confident going into qualifying until I started watching your monitor, but um, I have a, a buddy um, that, that told Travis Sauter told me that uh, as long as the confidence is high and the grip is high, you'll be fast. So we're going to find out if the confidence is high and the grip is low, then, then we're in trouble. But uh, I think our, our, it's good that we're going to leave because now we can kind of watch and learn from these guys being really loose and uh, make adjustments. Alan? John Hunter Nemechek picked a great track to make his first start of the year. You almost won this race last year. Do you ever feel like this place owes you one? This place, Bristol's one of my favorite places to come to, and it's last great Coliseum. Um, first truck start of the year. Uh, thankful for Mike Beam, Morgan Gallagher for giving the opportunity to come back to the family team and uh, run our A truck here. But almost won the race last year. Hopefully, we can do the same tonight. I feel like we had a pretty good truck on the long run, so I don't really know how we'll qualify, but uh, we should race good. So looking forward to that. It's a stacked field, uh, field tonight, guys. Boy, it certainly is. Good to see John Hunter back and uh, hope that uh, he's going to maybe run a couple of other races before the end of the season. How about Austin White himself? Uh, coming off that top five finish last week at Michigan, just put a 15.66 on the board, currently seventh. They put a couple top six finishes in his last four races, so really coming on here after uh, starting out with a top ten at Daytona this year. J.J. Yaley. 34 truck. If he can't pick it up here on lap two. This will be JJ's first truck series start of the season, but certainly a name familiar to race fans, regardless of whether we're talking about trucks, Xfinity Cup, open wheel, done it all. And Yaley's fast lap of the two is a 1597. Hermie. 
Well, momentum is a big part of this sport, and the driver and team that should have the most of that this week is Austin Hill and his 16 team. If you come down from that uh, big hive that win last week at Michigan? Uh, yeah, I think so. Um, you know, I'm still excited about it. Uh, it's playoff time, so time to get ready for Bristol, but I uh, can't thank everybody at HRE enough for giving me a fast truck today. Uh, I think we have a shot at the polls, so uh, we'll see what happens, but uh, our Toyota Susho Tundra, uh, it's been really good, so we'll see how tonight goes. Alan? An awesome year for regular season champion Grant Infinger, but it's the playoffs now. Do you feel that? Does every qualifying lap take on that much more importance? It's definitely a little bit more intensity here now that the playoffs have started, but I feel like we got a good tour score race in F-150, but we're not great. Uh, Jeff Hensley threw a few adjustments at it. We get a little bit more front turn. I think we're going to be really good tonight. Good, not great. Good assessment for Grant Infinger. Parker Kligerman finishing up his qualifying run and uh, doing it nicely at a 15.38. Good for second quick. Yeah, I talked about this being their Super Bowl. That's a lot of pressure, Phil, to go out there and lay down a lap after you see all these trucks slipping and sliding. He pushed through that pressure and came up with a second spot. Yeah, so, so, so nice to see Charlie Henderson's truck do a nice job out here with Parker Kligerman. Been so much, uh, so long a supporter of all forms of NASCAR. Great to see them have some success. And Parker, we know Parker will give that thing a good ride. Yeah, he's been uh, second here before. Uh, more recently, another top five, I think just a couple of years ago, as you look at Ryan Sieg, making a rare appearance in the truck series. Second start of the year for Sieg. Decent run going so far. Dover, his previous start this season, finished 16th. Of course, full time in the Xfinity Series. Going to be a playoff contender in the Xfinity Series, we expect, unless something disastrous happens between now and then. See, ninth out of our 15 trucks that have taken time. Here's Ross Chastain. When I asked Brett Moffitt earlier this week, if you couldn't name yourself, who would you name as the favorite to win the championship? And he said, Ross, and not too much of a stretch. He's won three times officially, and uh, he counts four times. Of course, he got DQ'd in one of those wins, but uh, he's still got four winner stickers on his truck. Listen to this. I want you all to hear something as he enters one. Hear him getting into the rev chip? Watch his hands. The driver loves this. Hit the chip because he knows he's done his job. What a lap. What that, how about that lap? The fastest lap we've seen all day long at a 15.10. Yeah, well faster than uh, last year's pole speed of a 15.24 set by Christopher Bell. And the reason why I said the driver loves that, but he knows he's maximized. He got in the gas hard on exit. He turned the RPM up to its limit, and then the rev limiter took over, and he's bump bouncing against it. But you know you're going as fast as you could, and that's the most hit we've heard of the chip so far. And he knows that he hit it a little bit sooner than he did in practice, so he knew he had a good lap going. Here's Tyler Dipple in the 0-2. Another driver coming off a career best finish and a great run last week at Michigan. Finished third. And you see the playoff drivers noted with a yellow highlighted background on their name as they position themselves in this qualifying rundown. Ross Chastain at the top. A little bit of a wiggle there from Dipple. By the way, the track record of 1482 was a couple of years ago set by Kyle Busch. Yeah. Let's call that safe here. Yeah. I think that record's <laughs> okay today. A five-time winner here at Bristol. Speaking of winner, I, yeah. I like Tyler Dipple. I like the progress they've made with mm -hmm. this team. I think he's a kid you can watch for to contend for wins as we race throughout the 2019 season. Qualifying continues from Bristol. Everybody just chasing Ross Chastain. Trucks in line getting ready for their shot at qualifying here at Bristol. Roll out, take the green, and put two timed laps on the board. The fastest one will be standing as your qualifying time. And right now, everybody's chasing a hot lap of a 15-10 by Ross Chastain. Back to Hermie. Well, a big win at Eldora a couple weeks ago gets you guys in the hunt for the championship. But it all starts today with a good qualifying lap at this racetrack. What's the biggest challenge for you to lay down the kind of lap you need? Oh, just to... Uh... 
you know, grow a set and get after it. Uh, we watched the first couple go, and Tripp said, well, I don't know if the track's got a lot of speed, and then we saw what Ross just did there. So uh, it's fast. We had, a, we had a good mock run in practice. We uh, made a lot of changes in practice to the Helmar Chevy, and, uh, you know, got it, got it handled pretty good. So it was pretty drivable. So looking forward to it. Happy to be in the chase here and um, try our best. Yes. How do you evaluate Stuart Friesen's championship hopes? Well, I, I would say... Hang on, buddy. Now, that was a quality save. Yes, it Gosh. was. I'd say he would have been one of my favorites, Vince, but that, that performance at Michigan's got me confused. It just didn't have the speed that they expected, and it was a bit surprising. This is what you call too much speed for conditions here <laughs> with Lou. Watch this save, though. He knew he had to really get up on the wheel to try to may, maybe get a time good enough to make the show. Doesn't look like it's going to be right now. He's our slowest truck, but as you mentioned, that's a quality save right there. Yeah, it saved him. the front end of that truck for sure. Look at him still driving a little brake there, but had it pointed in the right direction. Nice job. Next up is the four of Todd Gilliland. Interesting, Gilliland missed the playoffs, so he's not one of our championship contenders, but still one of those guys that uh, certainly is capable of playing the spoiler role by coming out and winning just about every week out. Well, what a job he did last year. He got lapped down, lap or two down early in the race by, by being involved in a spin, but he got all his laps back, uh, came all the way from the back of the pack and raced up to a top five spot. We talk about the traction compound down at the bottom. He went to the top of the racetrack. He probably, more than any other driver in the field here last year, ran the top of the racetrack and passed a lot of trucks, got a top five out of it. Well, and that is where he is slotted in currently with that run fifth. We'll see trucks up there tonight when we go racing, too, for sure. The track here at Bristol laid the traction compound down low and they scrub the track up top. It's going to be interesting to see how that thing comes in tonight. Well, Sheldon Creed runs. We'll check in with the Rookie of the Year. He's with Alan. And that's Tyler Ankrum. There's something about being young and just not knowing any better, right? You've got a big smile on your face watching all these trucks get loose. What are you thinking about to qualify for Bristol? Well, I told my guys when all that was going on is, you know, I drive till I see baby Jesus or you try to hit the wall, or you might hit the wall. You don't try to hit the wall, but you're going to die trying, so super loose out there compared to from what we practice at so I don't know what I expect here we're just gonna we're gonna send it another young driver another full send well they're brave when they're young aren't they yeah for sure Sheldon Creed by the way 11th send it means that's old people's old people would say we're gonna go for it kids are saying we're gonna send it we heard that from Sheldon Creed and now Tyler Ingram saying the same thing. So just noted it was sent. Yeah. That was not the lap that I thought we might see out of Sheldon Creed, one of our faster trucks in practice. Here's Matt Crafton. Crafton's been on pole a couple of times this season. 15 for his career, but twice this season. One of those drivers that got in on points. In fact, the only driver to get in on points when you count Grant Infinger as the regular season champion. Nice lap by Crafton. Talked to him down in the garage area. Pretty confident about this truck. He said it had a great feel to it. He said, I don't know how I'm going to qualify, but I got long run speed. Well, it looks like he's going to qualify okay too. It sure does. Crafton finishing up his qualifying run, and that's going to be good enough for third quick at a 15.37. How about a couple of tenths off from Ross Chastain? How about a pair of 15.37 cents here in the same, same time, both laps. That's pretty cool. Must be about all that. <laughs> Here's Corey Roper, the 04. Another one of the trucks that more than likely will have to qualify in on time. He, he does have some points he could fall back on, but he's pretty pretty well down the list because of not running all the races this year. That was a good one and two, but coming to the green, he was all over the place, and he is again down in three and four. It's going to hurt this oh. lap time. Not only the first lap, but no momentum coming to the white. Going to have to really smooth run here to make the race. This is a team from Texas. Family outfit. Several family members work as part of this group that uh, travels on the road and helps prepare the truck as Corey Roper slots in in the 18th position. He's beaten four trucks. You're going to have to beat nine to, uh, to make the top 27 in speed. You can pretty much count Timothy Peters out of that group. Yeah, I'm 
I'm not sure Corey Roper might be in the same boat. Still has, certainly still has a chance. How about this young man, the 18-year-old from Huntersville, North Carolina, Harrison Burton? Another who, frankly, we expected to be a playoff driver, and he did not make the playoff eight, but certainly is capable of winning every time they roll it off the truck. A solid qualifying effort so far for Harrison. Won the K&N race here a couple of years ago. Expect him to be up in the mix tonight. Third oh, fast. Yeah, solid run for Harrison. 1534 puts him in the third position. All of our winners this season have started from the top 10. And if you're into that sort of thing, you think, well, you better qualify inside the top 10 then. If Absolutely. It's been that way every single race. I don't think we've ever had a year uh, that we went all year with every every winner coming out of the top 10. Jordan Anderson's been spending a lot of time in the top 10 of our races lately, hasn't he? Really improved his performance, but missed turns one and two there. That wasn't good. We were just talking during a commercial break about, you know, maybe if you don't see enough grip down there in the traction compound running up above. Well, that was a good illustration that there isn't much speed above the traction compound right now. There will be, as you said, Michael, in the race when we get trucks side by side some more rubber down. But right now, you better be on the bottom. And Jordan in the 21st spot. talked about our championship contenders but how about these drivers that aren't with the series on a regular basis John Hunter Nemechek Bill Lupton has been impressive in his his uh, couple of starts this season yeah, Chandler Smith down there at KBM number 51 two starts a fourth place finish and an eighth place finish for him led a lot of laps in Iowa right mm, just his first start ever he broke away from the field earlier Speeding penalty on pit road, I think, took him out of a potential top five finish. Speaking of leading a lot of laps, John Hunter Nemechek last year in position to win this race. Fuel injector quit while he was leading, and it derailed his hopes. They brought the same truck back and hoping that John Hunter can put him in a similar position tonight. Solid qualifying effort for Nemechek. Currently sits sixth, and back to Allen. And you guys mentioned the lack of speed for Sheldon Creed in the two truck. That's because they think it's running on only seven cylinders. That's why you see the hood up there. The officials from Illinois there taking a look, trying to diagnose exactly what is wrong. They hope it's something fixable, but potentially an engine change coming for Sheldon Creed. We'll keep on it. Here's Austin Hill. Vince, this truck was really fast in practice this morning, not only on the one or two laps, but the long haul fastest overall, but his lap tracker where the teams, the engineers really study how the fall off is at their truck. His performance was there. And a two-time pole winner this season. Let's listen to the 98 of Infinger as he gets ready to take off, too, after Hill takes the checkered flag. Second for Hill. Finger inside the top ten. That's awesome too. Great job. I love the, the way he was working the wheel when he he wasn't nervous, y'all. That was just trying to fill a heat in the tires and uh, get up to speed as quickly as he could. How about the way that thing broke broke loose in second gear when he grabbed second gear? Those tires started spinning. Infinger slots into the top ten. Currently sits eighth. It has been a handful for a lot of drivers so far. Qualifying continues after this.
Welcome back to Bristol, where it's the start of the playoffs, and I am with playoff driver Matt Crampton, who's fifth on the board right now. We can see it out there, kind of what it's like. How about you explain to us what it's like out there on the track right now? I didn't hear a word you said. Uh, What's it like out there? It looks slick. Yeah, it's real slick right now. I mean, the track's been sitting in the sun. We practiced at 9 this morning to 9 to 10, and then 11 o'clock to 12 o'clock was a lot closer than we have right now. But then they've uh, had a few different classes out there, and they've burned this PJ1 off of it. So uh, we're very happy with this Ford Ford F50 at the end of practice. So I think it's going to race just fine. Matt Crafton looking for championship number three. It starts tonight, guys. And speaking of three, this would be the third career start for the driver of this truck, Chandler Smith. And he has been impressive so far, hasn't he, in his three previous starts? Yeah, and certainly does some amazing things in the Arkham Menard Series. Four wins already, won four short track races in a row in the Arkham Menard Series. How about that recovery? That's what I like seeing. He was loose coming to the green. Lost all his momentum, lost all his speed, but was able to drive the perfect lap and get a great qualifying effort. Track position, I talked earlier how short the stages are and how quick this race will go by. You really need that track position here at Bristol because not only of, of urgency to get going, but anything can wreck, anybody can wreck at any time. And the further you're back in the field, the more susceptible you are to being involved in those crashes. There's another one that's been impressive in uh, limited exposure this season. Dylan Lupton, two races, a tenth and a fifth. Yeah, very nice job for Dylan Lupton. Got to know him a little bit back in the days when he ran the Canyon West Series. 25-year-old from Sacramento, California. DGR Crossley. Tenth on the lap number one. That'll comfortably get him in the show tonight. 1546. Remember the fast time so far is a 1510. That's Ross Chastain. Two tenths clear of the field right now. I don't see that very often. On a short track, that's almost impossible. You see our playoff drivers highlighted in yellow on the left side of the grid, and plenty of reason for Chastain to smile. There's the watermelon man himself. Angela Rock in the 44 truck. Opened the season with an eighth place finish at Daytona. Been inside the top 20 a couple of other times in six starts this season. I haven't seen her since Texas back in June. Had a spin early on in the first practice this morning. Minor damage to that 44 truck for Nice Motorsports. Can't even hardly tell where there was any damage. Picks it up a couple of tenths on the second lap. Still uh, 29th of 30 that have qualified so far. That will bump Timmy Hill into the show. He has now beaten nine trucks, so that makes him locked in at 21st. Will be no problem for this driver, Brett Moffitt, the defending series champion. Listen to that rev chip on this track. Really carrying it deep down into the corner. And look at the result. About midnight moon moonshine on board that truck. That's Junior Johnson's company. This is an awesome lap. So far tracking in the green. Quickest of the bunch so far for Brett Moffitt at a 15.02. And that knocks Chastain from the perch. Does that truck bobble once? It doesn't look minutes. like it. Both laps looks like in the O's, Ben. Uh, 15.09. So a 15.02 and a 15.09. What about Junior Johnson telling ODW you better get up on that wheel, boy, and get after it? <laughs> Brett Moffat looks out that windshield and sees Junior Johnson on the hood. He knows he better <laughs> perform, baby. Love that. Me too. Seven in a row for DW back in the day driving for Junior. Not only seven in a row, Michael, but he would finish 500 laps and he wouldn't have a mark on that car. It, it, it was impossible to do that. Here's Ben Rhodes in the 99. It's been a heartbreaking season for Rhodes. He finished fifth in points during the regular season and didn't make the playoffs. Got to win, baby. NASCAR fans said we don't care about points. We want to see these drivers get to victory lane. And NASCAR answered with this awesome playoff system. Ooh, what a strong run for Rhodes. And I, I like it, too. I do, too. I like the emphasis on winning and winning to get in. Uh, I 
you know, as, as much as you hate it for a guy like Rhodes to have a good season like he's had and to be fifth in points, I'm in favor of Wynn to get in. I am too. I really like this format when it was first announced. I've embraced it, and uh, and, it, and it just it is not uh, is not disappointed. I don't think. Solid for Rhodes, though, and it will be a roll of spoiler that he would like nothing more to fill as you look at Stuart Friesen, who finally got that first career win a few weeks back at Eldora. And you and I were talking to Harrison Burch, crew chief Mike Hellman Jr., and he said they would like nothing better than to be a spoiler. He said he was getting it. They talked to Ben Rhodes, crew chief, talking about Todd Gillen. They want to be a spoiler. They want to go to victory lane and deny these playoff guys an easy entry into the next round. Friesen, solid. Catch the wall there. He might have just tipped it. Jumped up into the third spot with that 15-15. Nice run. Yeah, Friesen last week, Mike, you mentioned was off a little bit at Michigan. I mean, his average running position was about 15th last week, but he kind of salvaged an eighth place finish out of that as you see him just about get the wall. Oh, plenty, plenty of, of room. Plenty of room there, Mike. He had to react quickly. But I thought what Friesen did last week is something that could uh, play into his hand in the playoffs, or any driver's hand, really, but when your average running position is 15th, but you finish eighth. Those are points that really could come back to make a difference uh, down the road. You look at this kid of Tyler Ankle. He's in position for another win. And Michigan got involved in that big late race crash, but he was Michigan. That's a good lap time for the practice as well. You see him tracking right now, pretty good lap going right now, tracking fifth, straight up off of turn number four. Fifth it is for him at a 15-24. Bobble there off turn two. Cost him down the back. You can see momentum loss there. It's going to be a solid effort, though, from Tyler Ankrum. Job well done. Ends up fifth. 15-24. Ben Rhodes currently sits fourth. Hermie. And he's watching to monitor fellow competitors. And the role for the 99 now is that of spoiler. So uh, you guys prepared to uh, put on a show tonight? Yeah, we want to play off. The, we want to spoil the playoffs, and um, we don't have to really follow any pit strategy tonight. We do what we think we need to do to get track position. So um, qualifying was okay. I think it's got really good speed for the race. Hopefully the track will come to us a little bit. Here he is. Going to be top five rolling off tonight here at Bristol Vince. Here's the 54 of Natalie Decker, another one of those trucks out of the DGR Crosley stable. Following up her teammate Tyler. Natalie with a season best finish of 13th at Las Vegas. Has run all but three races this season. First lap good for 25th. And jumps up a bit. Half dozen spots on that second lap. Nice job. 15.54 for Natalie Decker. Puts her in the 19th position. And our final qualifier of the event is the defending race winner, Johnny Sauter. One year a year ago. And a guy that I, I just feel like is going to make some noise in these playoffs. He had a great practice this morning. Like you said, Vince, a winner here a year ago. This uh, this Grizzly veteran is going to come come to play here in the playoffs. I'm looking forward to a lot of big things out of Johnny. I was talking to Johnny this morning. We had the media day over at, uh, at our studios on Tuesday, and he was joking around quite a bit. I saw him on Race Hub, and he said, he said, we've had the speed. We've had so much bad luck, and he really has. He's had some horrible luck here. Had some really poor finishes. Very uncharacteristic of Johnny and this team, but uh, he said that's all behind us now. We're in the playoffs. It's a whole new season. Well, celebration underway for that man, Brett Moffitt, his second career pole. He'll lead him to the green later this evening at Bristol. <laughs> By far, he could be number one. You know, you're only 18 degrees away from an engine disaster. This race car will not ever beat me. HRA, Sunday on FS1. Well, we identified them as the championship favorites a little while ago, and boom, 
shows how much we know. That's right. They identified them. We're brilliant. As, <laughs> as the two race favorites tonight as well. Remember what's on the line here. You go to Victor Lane tonight, you just ease right into the next round of these playoffs. Yeah, you don't go to Canada with many worries, do you? No. Nope. Oh, how big that would be to ah. start off the playoffs with a win tonight. Have we ever had a race on the last lap up there that somebody didn't get wiped out mad? <laughs> we, we haven't had a race that uh, nobody was mad. We might have had one that nobody got wiped out in the last lap. But yeah. it, we've, we've had people mad at each other every race. Going to be a lot of hurt feelings probably tonight, too. But Brett Moffat hopes he's not one of them. He's with Allen. And the best way to start your championship defense is by being on the pole for the first playoff race. We know you got speed. What do you think you have for the race tonight, Brett? I really thought we were better in race trim than we were qualifying, so that kind of surprised me there. But Jerry and everyone on this 24 GMS Chevy Silverado did a great job making adjustments. We unloaded quick. Uh, both our poles are at concrete high bank half mile, or this is a half mile, bristles a mile. So um, I feel like we have a good setup for tonight. We're uh, lucky enough to be supporting Junior Johnson, Midnight Moon on the car here at Bristol, which is pretty awesome. We didn't give him a great showing in Charlotte, so hopefully we can go to Victory Lane with him tonight and drink a little moonshine afterwards. A good looking truck, the defense champion starts on the pole and he mentioned Jerry that's Jerry Baxter his crew chief and uh, Jerry had that one on rails for qualifying and that is indeed a good-looking truck I love it well Brett Moffitt is the number one seed the defending truck series champion as well and he will start from the pole tonight as you see where our eight playoff contenders will roll off under the green. Yeah, 14th is the worst of the bunch with Grant Impeck, and we know he's got a good truck. Probably will move forward from there. Matt Crafton back in the left with another guy with a good truck. But they're starting outside the top 10, and you can't win this series this year unless you start in the top 10, right, Vince? Well, that's what history says. All of our winners have come from the top 10. We have had a winner here at Bristol start from 13th, though, so anything is possible. Coming back to Bristol in a moment. Trucks are parked now, but won't be that way for long. Get ready to go racing here at Bristol after qualifying this afternoon. Uh, put Brett Moffitt on the pole, and Ross Chastain will start alongside on the front row, and our playoff drivers all framed in yellow. You know, got six of our eight starting up in the first four rows. Keep your eye on that 16 truck of Austin Hill. Really solid practice this morning. And Obviously, pretty big week last week, so that team's rolling into the playoffs here at Bristol. Yeah, Hill hasn't had much success here at Bristol, but uh, he admitted that this is not a place that he's particularly comfortable, but has looked pretty good so far today. See Brennan Bull back in row number five. Remember, he had a runner-up finish this year at Charlotte. Rafael Lassard, he was all over the track, really loose in qualifying, but was able to stay in the gas enough to qualify inside the top 20. Sam Mayer, the k and East points leader making his truck series debut just 16 years old. He had it stacked up against him too. He had to go out in the first truck and just put in a lap time that he knew he was going to get to race with. So it's going to be fun to watch Sam tonight. He did a fine job to beat Clay Greenfield back in row number 11. Clay always comes here to Bristol, puts a good effort in. Austin Wayne Self coming off that strong run a week ago. Jordan Anderson back there in row 15 as well as you see the 32 drivers that are filling out the field for this evening's race here at Bristol. The playoff opener. And here's a look at the first round of the playoffs. Of course, we're here this evening at the half mile at Bristol. Then we go to the road course and finish round one in the cutoff race at Las Vegas. I think it's safe to say there's no similarity whatsoever, isn't there, Michael? That is going to be a fun, diverse group of races to watch these drivers compete in. Who's able to win? We heard Ben Rhodes saying, all I'm about is spoiling these playoffs. I want to get victories. And these drivers desperately want to get to victory lane. They're hungry. Going. They're hungry for victories. Starving. It's about time for dinner, but you better eat quick because racing is just around the corner. Race day coming up next, and then we're going to do 200 laps here at the world's fastest half mile. From what you saw, Mike, uh, any, any surprises out there that might be lurking for tonight? Didn't show their hand in qualifying? Well, I, did, I mentioned a couple of guys that I think will be stories tonight, but also, you know, I talked about Meyer back in 18th position. Todd Gillen, he's in 17th. I believe tonight the winner could have come from outside the top 10. A lot of strong trucks back there. Sheldon Creep back in 24th. May have had some sort of an issue in qualifying. That wasn't the speed we saw in practice.